Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. How are you? I hope you're well. This should be an exciting live today. A very interesting topic, so let's go ahead and get started. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So today's topic, I hope you took a look at your screen and you will know that today we're going to talk about why Simone Biles' husband denied knowing her. This is going to be a different take, love, lies, and cultural differences. And so before we get into today's broadcast, I want to go over some housekeeping items. And so obviously we are Black Travelers Network. Let me first introduce myself because I don't want people to get it twisted. I'm Jess. I am the founder of Black Travelers Network, and I'm happy to come on and host uh, this broadcast today. Uh, It's a great way of connecting with people online. And I'm just truly, truly excited to be here this very early morning when I know most people are sleeping. I'm a night owl, so I enjoy getting work done in the middle of the night. And so for those of you night owls, Shout out to all of you. Um, I don't want to really date the broadcast. So if any of these destinations that's showing up on your screen stand out to you, make it a point to email us at blacktravelersnetwork at gmail.com. That's Black Travelers and Travelers is spelled T-R-A-V-E-L-E-R-S network at gmail.com and as you can see we are going to be in Brazil we'll be in Spain South Africa Kenya Vietnam throughout the year different times during the year so if any one of these destinations jump out at you definitely reach out to us because depending on when you see this you will have an opportunity to join any one of these trips or if you watch the broadcast at a later date and these trips have passed you can hopefully uh, join us on another destination that may actually speak more to you and so To help frame today's broadcast, I want to ground this discussion and put it into context. You know, I had people leave the Black Travelers Network community because they felt that as a travel platform, we should stick to speaking strictly about travel. So to help you, those of you who are watching, understand the purpose of this broadcast, it's important that you know this video will highlight cultural differences. And we're going to talk about the early dating stages leading to leading up to Simone Biles and her husband, Jonathan Owens, leading up to their marriage. And we're also going to talk about her gymnastics counterpart, who is a white woman, Sean Johnson East marriage. We're going to talk about her marriage and the early dating stages of her marriage. I'm going to highlight the cultural difference and the stories that are told as a direct result of those cultural differences. And so culture, when you think about travel and as a travel platform, this is why this is so important because culture is what we pay attention to. It's what we discuss and learn from when we travel together as a a Black Travelers Network community. So that's the most basic part of this broadcast. Just keep in mind, we're talking about culture and two different cultures to be specific. The other important fact that you should know about the Black Travelers Network community is 
our trips, on our trips, when we travel and meet in the world's most beautiful destinations, we discuss different topics that are happening in the world, who we are as people and what's happening also in the news. Like we, we talk about a number of different things when we travel because as people, we are getting to know each other, the people in our community. That is the whole point in traveling, getting to know people that you may not know, people you may never meet had you not come on uh, one of our trips. And so that's the, the, the best part about traveling with us. People are actually able to develop connections as a result of joining our travel experiences. And so on this platform here on YouTube, although we discuss travel, I am expanding the topics of discussion because that's how we do when we travel together as a travel community to other countries. So if you have not subscribed to the channel, go ahead, click the subscribe button and, and also help us to have this video show up more in the, the YouTube universe by uh, clicking the like button. And so in the last broadcast, we actually discussed Simone Biles. You know, that's a, a very uh, hot topic right now. And in our last broadcast, that was the focus. And so if you have not seen our last uh, broadcast, uh, you can check it out on YouTube. It's actually going to show up under the live uh, tab on the channel. It's not going to come up in the regular videos. Uh, we talk traveling and how, how women traveling to men, like what's the hidden message behind that. And so uh, definitely check out that video if you have not checked it out. Um, but I want to really go, go in on this one because the last broadcast, we talked about the hidden message behind women, women traveling to men. So, if, so I want to advance the discussion because to refresh your memory, I think it's important uh, that you take a listen just to refresh your memory to see what it was that Simone Biles' husband actually said that kind of got him in a situation where a lot of people felt a ways. How in the hell did you pull Simone Biles? <laughs> Man, and we I love this football talk, bro. I gotta get yeah. to it. I'm over here rubbing my knees trying to answer this question. Hey, Chad, I wanted to tell him, he's talking about being looked over. Now, when the right people look at you. Yeah, that's like, you know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> How did you do that, bro? Man, it's really, really how she pulled me, man. That's the question. Oh, man. Lord Jesus. Now you with Freddie. Now it's back. <laughs> now now you listen, with I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you. Organic story, man. So, I'm, uh, I'm about. I just got to Houston. I probably have been to Houston seven months. Um, I was single at the time, you know, so I'm just living, being me and myself. And COVID had just hit, and but I had just went to Arizona, and one of my boys are like, hey, man, you got to check out this app, you know? And I'm like, nah, I'll check it out. Like, what is it? It was called Raya at the time. So um, basically, it's like a dating app, but, you know, you have to go through certain, like, criteria to make sure that you're who you are. So literally, have been on the app for a couple of days, man, and it's like, she pops up, and I'm like, let me see who this is. Gymnastics. I ain't never, you know, I, I never really paid attention to gymnastics. So it, it, it piqued my curiosity, you know. So I'm like, okay, that's, 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 I'll see what's up. I swiped her and it said we match. So I'm just like, oh, okay, so I'm gonna see what's up. So I go do my workout and I come back and I get like, I had some likes on my Instagram, you know, and I'm like, I'm like, oh, this might be. It. I'm like, okay. So I see what's up and then I still waited. I'm like, man, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait till I, you know, take a shower and everything. Then I come back to my phone and then she messages me on the app like, hey, you know what I mean? And I'm, man, that's a, man, this gotta be fake. Like, I don't know, just, I didn't know who she was at the time, but like the first thing that I saw was that she just had a bunch of followers. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, she gotta be good if, yeah. 
I promise you, I'm a, I'm a real life story. When she won the Olympics, I was in college and we didn't have NBC, we didn't have Olympic channels and we're in camp, we're in camp. Late, late, late July, early August. So I'm not paying attention to, you know, so I never would have had a moment to where I would have watched like, you know. Jonathan, I'm gonna let you finish your story, man. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> but like I was saying, man, she she messaged me. This was like a Tuesday. And we 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 were texting back and forth and then we hung out Friday, man. And um we couldn't do much as COVID happened, everything was shut down. So um she came through down um down to Houston. She lived in the suburbs, so she had to drive about 45 minutes to me. Um then the rest is history, man. So So you was really the catch in I always say we and the men are catch, man. I always say we the catch, man. Yeah, so she really booked you. She did though. She is did, what you said. Cause I, I was fighting it. I was fighting it. So I was you, fighting it. So in truth, if I say this out loud, was Jonathan Owens ain't really want Simone Biles. Is at, what you're saying. <laughs> at the time, that's what you're not gonna say that. That's what you're saying. I was afraid, I, I was afraid to commit. I'm like, ah, I'm Man, this is my this is my third year. You know, I'm trying to ah, I'm like it's kind of early, <laughs> but you know, like I said, man, it happened when you least expect it. And we hung out, man. It was like we hit it off instantly. You know, we just laughed the whole night. One of the things he discussed was how he, as a man, is the prize. <laughs> that did not sit too well with the internet. You know, the internet has some very strong opinions about men, about women, and just overall, um, you know, just the, the, the interaction uh, that happens. And a lot of people just kind of drug him throughout the internet. And it's really one of those situations where I kind of wanted to give, uh, give him a, a little bit of the benefit of the doubt, even though I think the biggest problem he he had in that interview is that he talked about men as being the the prize and that just did not sit well uh, with the general public and so let's get into today's topic uh the story that is still trending is this story ladies and gentlemen so people just cannot get past the fact that this man said that when he first connected with Simone Biles that he did not know who she was. This is a very big issue for a lot of people in the black community at this moment in time because people have been dragging him off of that point alone. He said other things, but that point alone just really rubbed so many people the wrong way because it's him suggesting that he is in a way trying to humble her by playing her down and saying that he didn't necessarily know who she was. And so the internet, you know, the internet has a really interesting personality. Uh, the internet to me is like so hilarious because people will go above and beyond to pull receipts. And so they pulled up his old tweets from uh, back before Simone came onto the scene in the gymnastics world where her husband was actually talking about women's gymnastics and how uh, they had an Asian coach at that time. And he also made a comment about former uh, gym gymnast and Olympic champion and, you know, overall Olympian uh, Gab Gabrielle Douglas, who was really, really big uh, back then. So people are saying that he's lying and his lies are an attempt to him for him to, to humble her. He, and they're saying he's lying about not really knowing who she is. And I have to be honest with you and say, like, I don't for like, half a second believe that her husband does not did not know who she was like that that to me is very much beyond belief um because the one of the top people in her husband's field which is the NFL 
is Tom Brady. And Tom Brady, when he met her, he instantly recognized her back in, in 2017. Like he was not playing any games. Like he was, he, he was very, um, encouraging and very excited to, to meet her. So I don't for half a second think that Jonathan Owens did not know who Simone Biles was when he, when they first connected. So I did a little digging and I do have a little bit of a different take. And here's where I, I, I want to go with this because even though I, I, I don't believe her husband, <laughs> I know, I know it's a whole lie. It's really more about why. I think that's where we're at. Let's assume and let's just accept the fact that, okay, he lied and he denied knowing who Simone Biles was when they first connected. Let's accept that as a lie. <laughs> and let's accept it and let's move beyond that. And let's examine the why. Why would he lie? And I want to give the brother the benefit of the doubt. And uh, as I stated, I did some digging and I found my way to one of Simone Biles' counterparts, a gymnast named Sean Johnson. And so just so y'all uh, know, a lot of people like, I don't, they remember the name Sean Johnson, but they don't remember Sean Johnson like who she actually is and what she looked like and so just to kind of refresh your memory Sean Johnson see I'm like I've always been into gymnastics like I remember the old school gymnasts like the Mary Lou Rettens the uh Nadia Coleman each the Betty Okino you know of course we got Gabrielle Douglas Dominique Dawes Kim Zemesco Carrie Shug uh oh my gosh I could go on and on and on and name all of the famous gymnasts Shannon Miller I mean they all kind of had their error and Sean Johnson was a, a really big deal during her her era of gymnastics and as I I, I stated you know she actually um you know she predates Simone Biles Sean came onto the scene in notoriety in the early 2000s around 2008 and we actually didn't see Simone Biles come onto the scene until 2013 and that's when Simone started her name started showing up more and she became started the to her run at being a household name so i want to make it clear that these two women are from two different eras in gymnastics i don't want it to to come across like you know simone and um and and sean were uh, competitors because they were not they were not uh competing against each other sean sean johnson uh definitely uh predates uh, uh simone biles uh by not that not that not that much before actually um so i think you know just when we talk about the historical context i like to be right and exact about it so Sean Johnson actually retired from gymnastics in 2012 the year before Simone Biles came onto the scene but what these two women have in common is that they are both elite gymnasts who were known all over and throughout the world and they are both married to men who played, and in Simone Bio's case, her husband actually plays in the NFL. They both married American football players. And so that's really uh, an important detail. So those are the commonalities between those two women. And at this point in the in the broadcast, this is a conversation about cultural differences. 
So from this point on, I don't want anyone to take me drawing the distinction between these two gymnasts, Sean Johnson and Simone Biles. I don't want you to take me drawing the distinction between their marriages as somehow I'm suggesting one group is better than the other because they are very different. They're very different people. Do two different cultures, their husbands, although their husbands played uh, in, in the NFL, their husbands don't, didn't even play in the same on the same teams, nor did they play the same positions. I want to emphasize that everything about these two women is completely different. What I would like for you to take from the commentary is that as black people and a black community, not only should we look at situations from multiple angles, but in black African-American relationships and marriages, we need to make a conscious effort to elevate each other. And I love how the East family, which is Sean Johnson's family, publicly told the story of how they met. And Andrew East, which is Sean Johnson's husband, does nothing less than uplift his wife. So let me take a step back and say this about uh, this particular cu couple. Uh, Sean Johnson uh, East, <laughs> she, she now goes by uh, her, her, her married name, Moore. Uh, Sean Johnson East and her husband, Andrew East, have a very successful YouTube channel where they vlog about their life. They actually just had their third child. So if you are into family, channels on YouTube or family type of content and commentary, I would encourage you to go over to the East family. That's the, that's the name of their channel, the East family. If you would like to consume or watch or enjoy some, uh, you know, family content, there are lots of families on YouTube, but for the sake of this conversation and this discussion, I do want to highlight them because I'm doing a bit of a comparison between these two gymnasts. And I say that to say that in my digging, what I discovered that Sean Johnson's football player husband told her the exact same lie that Simone Biles football player husband told her, which was that he did not know who she was. Now, Sean's husband and Sean and her husband, Andrew, uh, have a video on their channel from five years ago. The, the title of the video is 10 Things I Never Told Anyone. And it was like a challenge because, you know, YouTube has all of these different challenges and different people participate in the challenges and do videos around the topic and create content based off of these challenges. And in this video, they both share things uh, that they never told. They, they both share collectively like 10 things that they never uh, shared with the public and some of the what they shared in their video is actually 10 things that they never even well one some of the 10 things were, were things that was a shock to them <laughs> and so I want you to take a listen to this clip because in this clip uh Sean husband He's going to talk, uh, well, he's going to admit to lying to Sean when they first started talking. So take a quick listen to this clip. It's a, a very short clip. I've always said, you don't know this either. Oh, gosh. I've always said, I didn't watch Sean in the Olympics. And I did. I don't know what to tell you. Why have you always said you ha you didn't? I don't know. I remember. That I was actually, a big thing at the beginning of our relationship. It was like, I didn't even know who you were. I know, it's all a lie. I never watched you at the Olympics. I, everybody only talks to you about gymnastics anyway. I'm trying to show the other side of you. I know, I lied. So you it was looked, all a I do play. I do remember seeing your face. And I was like... My, my little 15 year old self was like, that's a cute girl. But she's too short. I didn't know. 
<laughs> I'm sorry for always lying about that. I'm sorry. I had to get that off my chest. And <sighs> well, it was a lot. I didn't. I don't know. Do you forgive me for lying? I forgive you. You were really cute in the Olympics. So you had a little, a little baby. Wait. Hair. So did you actually date me because I was you an Olympic the, the gymnast? Ponytail. No. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the whole foundation of our relationship oh, right now. Oh, it is all Because gone. I used to go on dates with these guys. Like, people would try to set me up with guys. And I would go on a date. And I actually had a guy at a date at dinner be like, I'm your number one fan. And I was like, oh gosh. I just cannot, like, date anybody that knows anything about gymnastics or, like, is a fan of any kind. And so when I found Andrew, and he's like, I never even watched the Olympics. I don't know who you are. I didn't know you were a gymnast. I was like, oh, this is refreshing. So, take that in. <laughs> he lied. He told the same exact lie that Jonathan Owens told Simone when he first met her. What I think is fascinating is that white people across America did not drag Sean Johnson's husband <laughs> for lying to her about knowing her. And Sean Johnson, in, in the clip you can hear, she was legitimately confused as to why he lied about not knowing who she was. And what I took from this clip is maybe... It's the same way with Simone Biles' husband, Jonathan Owens. Maybe he's lying <laughs> about not knowing who she is because he didn't want to come across as being thirsty or like he was plotting to get her. Can we consider that maybe, just maybe, that's why he claims to not have known Simone Biles? And... You know, you heard what Sean Johnson expressed in her discussion with her husband about a previous situation where she was on a date with a guy who fanned out, <laughs> you know? But here's where the culture comes into play. Within the Black community, so many successful women have experienced less successful Black men trying to humble them by playing them down like they are not really all that, <laughs> you know? You also have Black men who feel a ways about Black women that they are, well, th who may feel some have expressed, uh, cause we see it all over YouTube that they kind of feel a ways about being with black women who are more successful or who make more money than them. That's a thing or issue in the black community. And that's the cultural baggage we oftentimes as black people carry. It also didn't help. Jonathan Owens that he said that men are the prize. I think that kind of worked against him. So I'm kind of giving him a little bit of a benefit of the doubt in a number of ways. But I want to say that it is quite possible that Jonathan Owens did not fess up to knowing who Simone Biles wa was because maybe he didn't want to come across as being an opportunist or like he had an agenda to get with the hottest athlete. <laughs> maybe that's something I hope we can consider. You know, you heard uh, in, in the clip what Sean Johnson said that, you know, she was turned off by the guy who fanned out over her that she thought, oh, I'm getting a genuine guy. And he's like, oh, I'm such a fan, you know? And it's like, well, dang, I can, can I be with somebody who doesn't know who I am? And so maybe that's why, uh, you know, I, I could, I could see that. I could see why someone would say, well, I didn't really know who you were, <laughs> you know? But the thing that I admire about, uh, Sean Johnson's husband, Andrew East, is that he actually, not only did he confess to Sean that he lied to her, but he also uh, confessed 
uh, to to his true feelings. They did. They also have on their channel a video uh, where Sean talks about how I met my husband, Sean and Andrew E. Storytime. So uh, it's worth checking out uh, when you get a chance. And he tells the story of how they actually uh, got connected. And I want you to take a listen to that clip. So here we go. I get a text from my brother who's in London. My brother was traveling the world like for 10 years straight because he was doing professional cycling and he got to go to all these cool places. So we would like, I would always live vicariously through him. So he'd go to like China, Nicaragua, South Africa, and he was going to London for the Olympics, which to me was the coolest thing ever, especially because I was right in the middle or sorry, I had just started my Let's see, 10, 11, 12. My third college football training mm -hmm. camp, which is like two a days in August. It's really, really hard. And so I was like, my brother's in uh, London. I'm going to get daily updates from him. So he lets me know, like his third day there, that he meets Sean Johnson, this Olympian. And so as we revealed in the 10 things I'd never mm -hmm. told anyone. You I, actually knew who I, that was. I actually knew who that was. And I was pretty pumped. You see what I'm talking about? This man... He confessed again and remind his, reminded his wife, no, I knew who you were. And he was so excited. You know, it's so great to hear a man come back and say, yeah, you know, I knew who you were. I didn't want to let you know I knew, but I was excited. He said he was pumped. That's how a man should speak of his wife. Now, the issue that a lot of black people have with Simone is that it is very clear that she was in pursuit of Jonathan Owens. Now, her white counterpart, Sean Johnson, I want you to hear how she played her hand with her husband. Well, now he's her husband, but it's it's very interesting and I'm and I'm all about the highlighting these cultural differences. And again, I'm not saying one is is better or than the other, but I'm saying it is different and I want folks to understand and examine the differences. So here's the clip. We had been texting a little bit, but it I don't want to say it wasn't leading anywhere, but it was just kind of like we were just texting. I was living in Los Angeles. He was in Nashville, Tennessee. I had just gotten back from the Olympics. I, I was just getting out of a four-year relationship. And it's like midnight. And between Shannon and I, we had finished an entire bottle of wine. I probably wasn't in the greatest like wow. space. I okay. wasn't fully coherent. But I remember Shannon saying, if you could go on a date with anyone right now, who would it be? And I was like, actually, there's this guy named Andrew East who I've been texting a little bit. This guy. And I'd be really curious to go on a date with him. So at midnight, I had his number and I texted him, which wasn't like, this isn't the smoothest way to go about it, girls, but I texted him and said, There was typos. Come to LA, question mark? Or like, you or should come to LA? Or want to fly out to LA, question mark, with some random special characters. I, I, I had drank a little, guys, okay? And that's all I remember. And then I went to sleep, woke up the next morning and woke up to a text saying, OK, I'm on my way. And I freaked out. We See <laughs> what an impressive story she tells. And so I, I want you to let us know in the comments, type below, however you want to do it. What do you think of that? Like, what stands out to you? Because what stands out to me in her sort of recapping the early part of their relationship is one, she doesn't really even acknowledge that she even wanted her husband like that. She's just like, whatever, <laughs> I was drinking. She says she had liquid, she had to have liquid courage, which is why she even texted him in the first place. So all of these years after they've gotten married and, you know, hooked up and everything, this woman still <laughs> has not really leaned into or fessed up to wanting to pursue 
her husband to see if there was really a strong possibility that they were a match. She never came across as being persistent or pursuing him. The other thing that sticks out to me in her comment is, and this is the thing that I love about her, is that she says to women who are listening to her, she says it wasn't the smoothest way of going about things. In other words, I don't necessarily recommend you do that. And what is she talking about? I don't necessarily recommend you text him (laughs) asking him to come to you per se. And they, they didn't even really know each other. And so I think she just didn't want to come across as so desperate or like she was in pursuit, which is why, you know, she highlighted and identified the fact that she and her friend, which I'm thinking is actually Shannon Miller, were, ended up drinking a bottle of wine and, you know, she, she got the liquid courage up to text him. Now let's fast forward to the travel message within Sean Johnson and Andrew East love story because the the travel message in Simone Biles and her husband's love story is that he said he, she drove 45 minutes to see him and that's how they started getting to know each other so that's his version Jonathan Owens version of of what happened and Simone Biles does not dispute that but I want you to listen to see how, I want you to see how other communities come together to create marriages. And, you know, it's very, very interesting how the stars aligned and, and the people around them got on board to make this union between Sean and Andrew happen. So take a quick listen. I get this text. And I'm like, wow, okay. And I go to my classes uh, the next day. I'm in, I'm a junior doing civil engineering. <laughs> I'm in concrete class. We did a whole semester on concrete. And I'm texting my dad. I'm like, hey, Sean Johnson texted me this. Uh, she wants me to come out to LA. Should I do it? He was like, literally said, I bought you a flight. Go. I- you see? I bought you a flight, go. Like all he had to do was text his daddy and say to his daddy, daddy, she wants me to come to LA. Now, mind you, he's in Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville. He Before he even talked to his dad, he, he let Sean Johnson, who was on the other side of the country, know, I'm on my way. He then messages his dad and his dad is all on board, like go, you know? And that is, that's just, I, I, I'm thinking about my community, the black community, how many men or how many women in the black community, if their son came to them and said, hey, this girl I'm really into wants to see me and she's on the other side of the country, What do you think the average black father (laughs) or the average black mother would say to her son? I want you to drop me some comments and let me know because I'm very curious as to what you think the average sister or brother would actually say about her son or her dog, well, her son or his son going across the country to be with whether it's a celebrity or or, or whomever who uh, 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 another black woman who they want to pursue this last cl- clip this is the last clip i want you to hear about uh Sean Johnson and her husband i want you to hear how Sean Johnson East, I got to make sure her married name is in there. Sean Johnson East is able to tell their love story today. And this is really simple, very quick. But I think this is to the point, and this is the travel message, The to sum up the travel messages in their love story, take a quick listen. This guy just flew across the country 
after or one text that was from a me power at move. midnight that says, gonna... want to fly to LA? Uh, uh, and he yeah. jumps on a plane. And I'm like, what do I do? This guy just flew across the country after one text that from me at move. midnight that says, gonna... want to fly to LA? Uh, uh, and he yeah. jumps on a plane. And I'm like, what do I do? This guy just flew across the country after one text that from me at move. midnight that says, gonna... want to fly to LA? Uh, uh, and he yeah. jumps on a plane. And I'm like, what do I do? See? This guy, <laughs> after one text, one text is all it took from her, jumps on a plane, flies across the country to see what's up, to see if there's anything going with, with where they could take things. That is so important. So those are the clips from the from their YouTube channel that I wanted to highlight. So I encourage you to go over to the East family. That's uh, their, their YouTube channel. Take a closer look at the East family. Uh, and uh, you know, just watch their videos. I think they should have some really interesting content right now too, because they just had their third child. So, uh, shout out to them. Congratulations to them. Uh, I do in love and enjoy their channel, but I say that to say, you see how her story puts her husband out there as the pursuer? You see how much pride her husband has in having pursued Sean Johnson, the Olympian, Sean Johnson, the gold medalist, the champion in the field of gymnastics, in the sport of gymnastics, I should say. This, ladies, is the move more of us and because I include myself in the same category, we have to start implementing these kinds of things to figure out quickly if the level of interest we have in a man matches or exceeds the level of interest he has in us. We must implement a travel test at some point. I'm always a fan of sooner rather than later, but at some point you got to you got to implement some type of travel test. How far will you travel to spend time with me with no expectations? That is the question. Because, you know, people will come to you. Men will come to you. They'll spend time with you. They'll put their feet up <laughs> if you allow them to, you know. But how far is he willing to come to spend time with you with no expectations. That's something you need to know very early. And so I say that because, you know, this is the stage and the age of holding men more accountable. You know, we see a lot of men sitting on the internet talking foolishness just straight foolishness I'm like oh my gosh and so I'm a big fan of making sure that uh, that we are being honest and finding out where we each stand and so the travel test I believe is a must and you know it it's it's something that's designed to weed, weed men out, <laughs> weed them out early. Don't invest a whole bunch of time and it's not worth it. You know, with implementing some type of travel test, with that move alone, you will weed out those who are serious and those who are casual. And there is nothing wrong. I want to implement, <laughs> I want to emphasize, not implement, I want to emphasize there's nothing wrong with it being casual, we are just not going to elevate a casual situation to being more than what it actually is. No more putting 20 on 10. Let's be real. Let's be honest. And let's establish some requirements in order to have access to us as women, in order to have access to our time. A man's ability to travel and his inability to travel has helped me over the years to weed out so many guys. 
And with that being said, men, I think the message for you men is if you offer to travel to a woman and she declines the offer without giving you a good reason, because you know, women's lives can be very busy. We can have a very good reason why it's not a good time for you to come visit. But what I'd like for men to know is that if your offer to come to, to, to travel to her, to go, go to her is declined, know that it might be a sign that she's really not feeling you like that. And that might not be someone you really want to invest too much time or energy in. I mean, it's something you must consider, especially if the reason or the rationale is not that strong. You know, if we are open to giving you a chance to get to know us and we decline you traveling to us, I'm talking about we as women, it's a good chance you have a greater interest, like you may have a greater interest in us or in the relationship than what we have in you. And again, some men can work through that and work with that. And some men don't really like that. Some men will move it right along. I mean, I think you have to take it on a case by case basis. It depends on the person. It depends on the energy she's giving. It depends on what she's going through at that particular point in time, because we all go through different things at different points in our life. I also want to suggest to men, whenever you travel to visit a woman, I don't care if it's from one side of town to the next one part of the city to the next part of the city. In the beginning, it's best for you to not have any expectations. I think once you hear more of uh, of Sean Johnson East and her husband's story, you will see that he was just up for it. You know, he didn't have any real expectations about whether or not it was going to work. I think at one point in time, he even highlighted he highlighted a confession that he had about once he considered breaking up with her and it was for a superficial reason, which was that he kind of felt like she was too short. Sean Johnson is like 4'11 and her husband is like 6'2. And he was like, I didn't want short kids, <laughs> you know? And so she never knew that. He never expressed that to her because he realized that was like dumb on his part. Um, but just know, like having no expectations in the beginning is actually helpful and healthy. And know if you're traveling to see a woman, know what all you are going to do before you, you get there, whether y'all are going out on a date, going to get something to eat and have an understanding of how you are going to handle your own time. You know, if you're traveling a great distance, have your money figured out. So you know where you are going to lay your head and not don't come with the expectation to be in her house on her couch. (laughs) So in other words, just have a plan, gentlemen. And ladies expect for him to have a plan, like just because he comes from one place to the next to to travel to see you or to visit you does not mean you have to open your home to him. Like that's not that's a lot to ask. And it's somebody you're getting to know or someone you don't necessarily you know, someone you, you're still trying to feel out. I, I don't recommend opening your home to, to someone that you don't have a uh, real confidence or, or, or knowledge of to, to feel comfortable and safe with them, even knowing where you live. Okay. So we're talking about after you get to a certain point in the dating or courting phase. And so I hope you found this live interesting uh, and definitely drop your comments below I think it's a great topic it's definitely something for you to consider and I mean it 
what do you think the average black mother <laughs> or black father would say to their son if their son came to them and said, hey, mom or hey, dad, I'm really interested in this girl. She lives on the other side of the country. I want to go visit her. She invited me. Do you think they would reach in their pocket and buy a ticket for that son to go visit this woman? I don't know. I could be wrong. Let me know what you think. We're talking about cultural differences here. That's it for today. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.